Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and welcome back to our 10 part guide series covering reforms in Total War 3 Kingdoms. This episode is part 7 and will be covering building unlock strategies. This guide is not a simple overview of all the building chain unlocks that's available from the reform tree, as the game does a great job of showing the required reforms for all the buildings. Our guide is more geared toward providing the best buildings to spend your limited number of reforms on. So we'll be going through color by color of all the key reform branches to unlock for the best buildings to help carry you throughout the campaign. Let's get started with the green reforms. First, we have the timber branch, which requires the five reforms shown here. With these five reforms, you unlock the level five Lumberyard County upgrades. This is one of the best buildings to unlock if your kingdom has control of the bamboo variety of the lumber yards in the south. As we can see here, before level 5, the bamboo lumber yard is just a simple peasantry income producing county with no upkeep cost. This is already pretty good, but at level 5, you gain minus 2 construction time to all building constructions and upgrades in the local commandery. This is a huge bonus and that sets the bamboo lumberyard apart from the normal pine variety. It not only saves you time to build up a commandery, but it also saves you money as you can reach the higher level and more profitable buildings much quicker. Next, we have the teach a man to fish branch here with just three reforms. With these three reforms, you will unlock the level five fishing port county upgrades. This is one of my personal favorite as at level 5, the fishing port building chain branches and you gain access to option 5B here that loses the upkeep costs while still producing 6 base food from fishing, which actually doubles because the two reforms taken doubles the food production from fishing, so you actually gain 12 food. And you also gain 100 base commerce income that was not available prior to level 5. So if you control any of the 8 fishing ports shown here, you should look into investing in these three reforms and power up your economy as you will not only gain new commerce income source, but also lose the upkeep costs that exist in all prior four levels. The fishing port also provides a substantial amount of food, thus making it one of the few counties that I do rush for level five as soon as possible in the game. Next, we move on to the red reforms with this two reform conscription branch shown here. If you have seen any of my commandery guide videos, they already know that I love to pair some of my food producing commanderies with military buildings, such as the conscription building chain shown here. With the two reforms, you can unlock the max level 3 conscription building in the training camp, where you gain plus 2 seasonal retinue redeployment, minus 12k population growth, a 5% discount to redeployment costs, and a plus 3 starting rank for all recruits. The plus 2 seasonal retinue deployment and the 5% discount work hand in hand for the free teleportation strategy that we'll talk about in part 10 of this guy series, and the plus 3 rank to all new recruit gives you stronger units at the same price. The minus 12k population growth is a penalty, but one that you can handle in food producing military commanderies that are not focused on peasantry income. Therefore, population is not important and by reducing it, you actually reduce the amount of public disorder that you have, so it's really a win-win. Next, we have the Horse Pasture Overlord branch. This branch requires 5 reforms, and only applies to the 4 Horse Pasture counties shown here. With these 5 reforms, you can unlock the max level 5 Horse Pasture building, and gain minus 20% recruitment costs, and minus 20% upkeep costs for all cavalry units. This bonus is stackable, so you can gain up to 80% discount for both recruitment and upkeep of cavalry units just from the horse pasture counties alone. If you combine this with a few more bonuses from items or characters, then you can potentially reach 100% and enjoy free cavalry for the rest of the game. This is extremely powerful, as shock cavalry charges are simply devastating in the game. Next, we move on to the yellow reforms, where we start with the free money tax collection branch. These three simple reforms unlock all the tax building upgrades shown here. These buildings are a staple of my early game economy and should be yours too. In the early game, your settlement level should stay around the small city level, 
to save food, and these tax collection buildings are one of the few building chains that can be upgraded to level 5 when your settlement is only at level 4. So you can get a higher level of peasantry income from these buildings. They do cause a great deal of public disorder, but in the early game, your empire is small, so it's reasonable that you always have an army around to smash these yellow turban rebellions for gold, experience, and potentially ancillary items. So try to rush for these three reforms your next game and enjoy a solid foundation to your early game economy. Next, we have a more late game branch in the public order temple branch shown here. The temple building here requires these two reforms to become fully upgraded. Despite the upkeep costs, the temple is actually the most efficient public order building in the game. So if you're struggling with public order in your mid to late game when you no longer want to deal with the rebellions, then this is the branch for you. And it only takes two reforms to fix your public order in no time. Next, we have another county upgrade branch in the anti-corruption copper mine branch. The four reforms shown here unlocks option 5B for the copper mine building chain. This option gives up a bit of industry income for 4% corruption reduction faction wide. And with six copper mines on the map as shown here, that is 24% of corruption reduction that you can enjoy without any investment in administrators or sacrificing more income from the state workshop branch just to fight corruption. Speaking of the state workshop branch, we have the industry starter kit branch next that covers the following four purple reforms. These four reforms are a must-have in every game and should always be prioritized. The four reforms here unlocks the level 4 upgrades for the state and private workshop building chains shown here. The level 4 versions are the maximum level that you can build in a level 4 settlement or a small city. So these will be the predominant buildings in most of your commanderies in the early to mid game to supply your industry income. Following these four reforms, you can take two more reforms for the level 5 state and private workshop branch here. This is obviously the reforms that unlock the level 5 state and private workshop buildings. These two reforms only become relevant after you have gained a small regional city or a level 7 settlement, since that is also the requirement to build these level 5 buildings. Obviously, these level 5 versions are much better than their level 4 counterparts, but you should not upgrade most of your commandery settlement to such a high level and waste so much food. So just focus on the most profitable ones, as I have laid out in my previous Corruption Guide commandery video, which I will link in the description below. Lastly, as an honorable mention, the shaft mining reform by itself is the Mining Starter Kit branch. This reform provides the key 20% discount to mining upgrades, which applies to copper, jade, and iron mines. This reform also unlocks the level 4 upgrades to those three mines, so it is a pretty important reform if you control a bunch of mining counties. Finally, we're moving on to the blue reforms. Here is Liu Bo reform, which is our commerce starter kit branch. It unlocks the level 4 M building as shown here. Like the previous state and private workshop, this will be your predominant commerce income building for most of your commanderies. As a matter of fact, the three buildings of inn, the state workshop, the private workshop should make up most of your small cities, as the combination of these three produces the most income for your economy. I will also link my commerce and industry template building guide in the description below if you are interested in how to build these three buildings in the correct order in your commanderies. Next, we have the upgraded version of the previous branch with the level 5 in branch with three additional reforms. This unlocks the level 5 in building which will also require a level 7 small regional city settlement to be built in. So this is definitely more of a late game reform branch to pursue. Lastly, we'll conclude with this blue and purple branch that is the Silk and Spice branch. Silk and Spice are specialty counties that produce alternative income source that are not part of the standard peasantry, commerce, and industry incomes. I like to compare these to the railroad properties in Monopoly because the more of these you collect, the more lucrative they become as their income multipliers are all faction-wide based, so stacking becomes a much more powerful tool here. 
Here are the Silk Trader County's upgrades, which shows that they produce a flat silk income source with a faction-wide multiplier boost. And here is the Spice Trader version, which offers the exact same figures as the Silk Trader, but just with a different Spice income source. There are a total of three Silk Counties in the Northwest, and three spice counties in the southwest, as shown by the map here. If you find yourself in control of these, then definitely pursue this branch composed of seven different reforms, shown here, and maximize your silk and spice income, as these are extremely lucrative and will help set you up to win games with a roaring strong economy. With that, this concludes part 7 of the series covering building reform. It is a little different and shorter than our individual color reform guides, but I hope you can still take something learned here to add to your game and look forward to having you back as we move on to unit unlocks tomorrow. Once again, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel to receive notification of the latest episodes, guides, and let's play videos. I also take requests in the comment section below for other guides that you'd like to see on the channel, as well as general suggestions to help improve this channel. So please feel free to drop a comment below. I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye.